For the past two weeks, you've been reading about a bad break. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Hi again, this is Corey with DNC Ball Cars, back again with another Junk Wax Era video. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. I have a box of 1991 Conlon Collection, uh, which was uh, put out by the Sporting News, uh, manufactured by Mega Cards. And before uh, we kind of get into this box, I'm going to tell you kind of how I'm going to do this video. I'm going to try to make these videos a little more consumable um, from beginning to end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first tell you a little bit about uh, this set, uh, which will hopefully be a few minutes, three or four minutes, and then uh, we will bust one pack on camera, uh, and then I will bust um, the rest of the packs, except for the last pack, and we'll just fast forward through those, uh, through a little video editing, uh, so that uh, that won't take any longer than a minute or so uh, to bust the rest of the packs. And then we'll save the last pack um, after we look at our hits. Uh, we'll open that last pack as well. So hopefully this entire video uh, will be uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, this will be my first um, attempt to try to, to uh, really do a little editing. Uh, but a little bit about uh, the Conlon Collection. Uh, the Conlon Collection is largely ignored by collectors because the sets aren't particularly valuable. Uh, but uh, for baseball historians, it is rich with baseball history and rare photography. Uh, these black and white photos that captured many of baseball's early stars were all taken by uh, one photographer, Charles M. Conlon, uh, and converted into baseball cord card format by the Sporting News. Uh, and the, the, the total Conlon Collection uh, which spans actually from 1981 to 1995, uh, consists of over 8,000 uh, photographs. Uh, the 1991 set, which we have here, uh, was the first set to be printed by Mega Cards in partnership with the Sporting News. Uh, this set consists of 330 cards, which were released in three different printings. Um, and the printings, um, the first printing, uh, includes some uh, errors, I guess you'd say, uh, that are actually very rare. Uh, the second printing also uh, is rather rare, uh, and the third printing is is common. So we'll probably be able to tell quickly whether we've got a, a very rare first printing, rare second printing, or common third printing. I'm sure we'll have a common third printing. Um, uh, Conlon's photography has been published for over a century now. Uh, but the first set devoted solely to his work wasn't released until 1981 uh, when the Sporting News released a 100-card set uh, and then several other sets over the next decade. Uh, and then in 1991, the series was re rebooted with the set we're about to look at here. Uh, Conlon himself started his career working for New York City newspapers in the early 1900s and took up landscape photography as a hobby. Uh, he was originally just a proofreader. Uh, New York Evening Telegram editor John Foster, who also produced the annual Spalding Baseball Guide, asked Conlon to take photographs of the players for the well-known annual. Conlon later wrote in the Sporting News that Foster came to know about my hobby, taking pictures. He said to me one day, Charlie, they need pictures of ball players for the guide, and there is no reason why you can't take pictures of the players as well as landscapes. It will be a good pickup for you, and it will be something for a day off. Uh, and then, of course, Conlon actually goes on. I'm not sure if you've heard of Conlon, but um, you know he was um, probably the earliest f known photographer or famous photographer. Um, and, and a lot of his pictures and photography today um, is is still um, uh, very well known and, and very famous and, and expensive. Uh, Conlon used a Graflex View camera and a large format glass plate negatives before switching to film. In all, he created at least 30,000 images over his career that span from 1904 to 1941. So all of these cards will have uh, photography from that time period, 1904 to 1941. Uh, most of his archive consisted of thousands of portraits of Major League Baseball players. However, his most famous photo 
is a fortunate action shot of Ty Cobb sliding into third base at Hilltop Park in 1910. Um, if you, you, you know this picture, um, if, if you don't know just by me talking about it, if you saw this picture, you would immediately recognize it. Uh, this photo and many of his images of baseball's early stars are instantly recognizable due to having been frequently reprinted over the years uh, and the subject of several books, trading cards, and documentaries. Uh, the Cobb photo is considered the first action sports photo. I'm not sure if we have a Cobb. I don't know if that picture is going to be depicted on a card here, but hopefully it is, and we can, we can look at that. Uh, Conlon, however, did not see much of the financial reward from his most famous image. In 1937, Conlon estimated he had received more than a thousand royalty payments for the famous image. However, these ranged from a dime to 50 cents each, uh, so not very much money. Uh, but now, many of his most famous photos sell for uh, over five figures. Um, very quickly here, last, last a bit of information about him. After his death, uh, the famous archive of 8,300 negatives, uh, less than one-third of the total number of images he created, was owned by the Sporting News before it was sold in 2010 to disgraced a Little Rock, Arkansas collector and businessman John Rogers. Rogers was later arrested on multiple charges, including fraud, surrounding sports memorabilia and several newspaper and famous photographer's archives, including the Conlon Collection, uh, in 2016 after his home and office was raided. Uh, in December 2015, uh, Arkansas judge ruled the negatives could be sold to pay off some of the millions of dollars in debt owed by Rogers. The archive, now consisting of 7,462 negatives, with no record of where the missing negatives went while in Rogers' possession, was sold by Heritage Auctions for $1.79 million, so just shy of $2 million. Uh, Rogers is also being sued by several newspapers and the family of George Burke for fraud, as thousands of original negatives from several archives have come up missing. So just a little bit of background. I know it's probably a little longer than, than I had anticipated, but um, I think the history of these uh, cards um, are important, uh, or the photography, I should say, behind the cards. So without further ado, we are gonna bust open this box. Um, I know this box is rich with um, uh, early Hall of Famers. Uh, again, we're talking about uh, the early 1900s up through, you know, about 1941. Let's see there we go. Um, I am, uh, kind of take pride in knowing Hall of Famers, but, you know, it's really more um, modern era ha Hall of Famers, uh, really starting kind of in the 1950s. So, um, obviously, you're going to have some Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb and some well-known Hall of Famers, but there's going to be some others as well. So, as I mentioned, we're going to open one pack here. Uh, we'll fast forward through the opening of the rest of the packs, save one pack, and we'll open that at the end after we kind of go through um, do we go through our uh, hits or what I would consider hits? So these are, <coughs> excuse me, in, in the little uh, cello packs, I guess. They're certainly clear. There's Johnny Evers, who is a Hall of Famer uh, on the front. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the best way to get these. I may have to just cut these open with a pair of scissors. There's not really a good. A uh, little thing to cut, uh, so we'll just snip those and uh, pull that. Um, you know, this box did appear to be well kept. Uh, I think I got it on eBay for oh, 15 bucks or so. Can't remember, but it wasn't very much. I just not willing to give too much for these these junk wax era videos. Uh, here he is with the Boston Braves. Now, um, he became known as a Cub um, earlier than that. The Tinkers, Tinker to Evers to Chance uh, combo. Uh, we'll kind of take a quick look at the back of these as well, which is what kind of why we're going to go over this first pack together. And you can see, as I mentioned, he, he did get his start with the Chicago Cubs. And you can see here... Um, 
he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1946. So it's kind of cool to know that um, uh, one gentleman, Charles Conlon, took all of these uh, pictures. Uh, here is Frank McCormick, uh, NL MVP in 1940. Moose Salters, St. Louis Browns outfielder, 1939. Chief Wilson, 1912. Most triples in a season, 36, all-time leader. I'm not sure if that still stands. Probably does. But obviously these came out in 1991, so somebody's had more than that since then. Wally Shane, 1936, Cleveland Indians coach. On Warnicky, pitcher, Paul Derringer, Reds pitcher, Hal Wren or Ryan, Boston Red Sox, Jack Knott. You know, this just this is just a different era, uh, both for baseball and sports, and just really for America. Um, I just really kind of enjoy looking at the field and the stands. Um, Ernie Shore, Boston Red Sox pitcher. George Pipgrass, New York Yankees pitcher, 1927 Yankees. Murderers Row Yankees. Uh, Earl Combs, New York Yankees. G. Walker, Detroit Tigers. Charlie Gelbert, St. Louis Cardinals shortstop. Mickey Cochran, who's also a Hall of Famer, inducted in 1947, Philadelphia A's catcher, and Frankie Frisch, who's also a Hall of Famer, St. Louis Cardinals second baseman, and Dick Kaufman, New York Giants pitcher, wearing his hat kind of uh, sideways there. So that is the first pack. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open the rest of these packs and we'll just fast forward those uh, with some um, editing magic and we'll come back and look at uh, all of the hits. All right, now we're back. I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the, the cards that we got, I, I didn't open all the packs. I have about four or five packs left. Um, actually, I would like to give give one of these away to one of our viewers. I'll, I'll tell you how to how to do that in a, in a minute. Uh, but I did pick out a few. I mean, it, this, these packs are loaded with, with old Hall of Famers. If, you're, if you like baseball history, there's tons of trivia, tons of cool information from this era. So... Um, if you if you like this this era, I would definitely encourage you to uh, to possibly um, uh, buy a box of these. They are not very expensive, and um, I'm actually going to uh, take a lot of these cards and just you know look at the backs and read the stories. They're very cool. Uh, this is actually Charles Conlon. He had his own card in the set, which is cool. I don't know if that's his actual uh, own photography there perhaps on a timer or something, but um, I don't know if you really want, if you want to read that, you can feel free to pause that and, and kind of read it, uh, what they said about him. I will definitely read that myself. Uh, again, just some of the cool Hall of Famers we have here. Uh, Ty Cobb, Minky Cochran, uh, Jimmy Fox, Rogers Hornsby, Bob Feller, uh, Chief Bender, Enos Slaughter. Uh, there's the only we did get a Babe Ruth. That's the only one. That's a I've seen this this picture throughout my life, so I'm pretty sure that's an iconic picture of, of Babe Ruth there, taken by Charles Conlon, Smokey Joe Wood, um, Addie Joss, who uh, I'm not sure if you know about his story. His life was cut short. Um, I believe he was instrumental in kind of creating one of the first all-star games. Uh, when he died, uh, the other players uh, did a benefit all-star game, essentially, for his widow. Um, and I think they kind of kept that tradition. Uh, Casey Stingle, obviously famous manager here's in his playing days. Uh, Christy Mathewson, the Christian gentleman here. Uh, 
Lou Gehrig. That's another iconic picture that I've seen of, of uh, the Iron Horse uh, in the past. Lefty Grove, Eddie Collins. Um, Fred Snodgrass, he's uh, not a Hall of Famer, but I included this because um, I had recently read this book as well. If you Again, if you like baseball history, uh, you, you should read this book, The Glory of Their Times by Lawrence Ritter. Uh, there's also an audio version that actually has the actual interviews. Uh, Lawrence Ritter, uh, back in the late 50s and early 60s, he actually went around and started interviewing a lot of the uh, the turn of the century ball players, uh, and this is one of the stories uh, from that book. Uh, if you want to pause that and read that, it's very interesting. Again, if you're watching this video, uh, you probably like baseball history, uh, and that is a very, very cool book that I would encourage you to read. Walter Johnson, uh, Tris Speaker, Honus Wagner here uh, in his uh, coaching days, obviously a little older here, but Obviously, he's probably he his he's got a baseball card that is uh, the the T two hundred six Wagner that's worth uh, more than any any other card. Connie Mack here again, Hall of Fame manager, uh, very dapper, would always wear the the suit uh, in the dugout. Mel Ott, uh, I included this card just because it's a, a, it's just an interesting um, bit of knowledge here, and one of the reasons that I think baseball historians would like to look at this. You know, he led the league in 1916 with 12 home runs. Obviously, you know, this is uh, in the, the dead ball era, so that's not surprising, but it's just, uh, again, something that's interesting. There's a lot of these league leader cards, lots of trivia cards, um, just just story cards. Here's Miller Huggins, a manager of uh, uh, those famous Yankee teams. <laughs> he had the task of... Uh, of uh, managing uh, Babe Ruth and uh, keeping him under control. John McGraw, another uh, famous manager, arguably the best manager in history. Uh, thought this was cool. He's not a Hall of Famer, obviously, but uh, Wally Pipp, um, obviously uh, the the reason he is known is because uh, Lou Gehrig replaced him uh, and went on to um, have the... Uh, the, the the streak of games started that would later be broken by Cal Ripken uh, and then uh, Hank Greenberg. So again, there were a lot of other uh, Hall of Famer cards. That was just a few that I pulled uh, that I thought you might be interested in seeing. Uh, if you would uh, like one of these packs, I do have a pack that I uh, would, would like to send someone. Uh, the first person uh, that... Um, uh, comments on this video and then follows us on Twitter and sends me uh, a, a direct message on Twitter. Um, I will send you a pack of cards. Just send me a send me a message and say um, you know you'd like the the pack. And if you're the first one, uh, I'll confirm that and you can send me your address and I'll I'll send you a, a pack of these uh, in the mail. Uh, and um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching.